So, uh, let's talk inverse functions. And I'm going to go through this a little quickly because we only have 27 minutes left in class because of the, the drill. So, But we still should have plenty of time to do this. One piece of background um, information about function notation. The name of the function is f of x. Okay, all right. Everybody agrees with that. We've seen that many, many times before. Today we're going to talk about the inverse of f. Okay, and that's how it is written right here. This is how we write the inverse of f. This is said f of x. This is said the inverse of f. Okay, so that's how we say it. Okay, so we're going to talk inverses today. Okay, so we talk about function notation f of x. We write the inverse as f with a negative one exponent of x. Okay. All right. So four quick, easy steps to finding the inverse of any function. Okay. The first step is your function is going to be written in function notation. So it's going to say f of x equals, in this case, it's 4x plus 2. Okay. Your first step is going to be you are going to take this f of x here, that part right there, and you are simply going to rename it as y. So you're taking it out of function notation, and you're putting it back into just a simple equation with two variables, x and y. Okay, That's our first step. Replace f of x with y. Second step, you are going to switch the position of x and y. So you are going to take x, put it where y is, take y, and put it where x is. Everything else stays the same. You're just going to switch your x and your y. Then, you're going to solve this new equation for y. So the first thing that I would do is I would subtract 2. So I get x minus 2 equals 4y. Then I would divide both sides by 4, giving me x minus 2 divided by 4 equals y. Once you have it solved for y, then you switch it back into function notation. But now because you found the inverse, instead of it being f of x here, now it is going to be the inverse of f is equal to x minus 2 divided by 4. And that is how you find the inverse of a function. First. You switch it into y form, y equals form. Switch your x and your y. Solve for y. Switch it back into function notation. Yeah. What I'd like you to do now is I would like you to find me the inverse of this function using those four steps. And hopefully, it is one of those four choices that we have there. Go. So my first step is I am going to write it in y equals 3x to the fifth minus 2 form. Then from there, I switch my x and my y so that it becomes x equals 3y to the fifth minus 2 is my new equation. Solve that for y. I'm first going to add 2. Then I am going to divide both sides by 3.
Then I am going to take the fifth root of both sides. So that gives me the inverse of f is equal to the fifth root of x plus 2 divided by 3, which is this last one here in my list. Agree? Fantastic. Okay. The composition property of inverses says that if I have two functions, f of x and g of x, okay, if I have two functions and they are inverses, then f of g of x is equal to x and g of f of x is equal to x. And I have to show both in order to prove that my two functions are truly inverses of each other. Okay. What this means is I'm going to take x and I'm going to put it into f. Well, that's just going to give me f of x. Okay. And then I'm going to take f of x and I'm going to put it in for x in g of x, do all of that math, and I should get out x at the end. Then I'm going to take x, and I'm going to put it into g of x. That's going to give me g of x. Then I'm going to take g of x, and I'm going to put it in for x in f of x. And I'm going to solve, do all that math, and I'm going to get out x. If I get out x at the end of both, I've got a function, or I've got an inverse function. Okay? If I don't, then they are not inverses. Okay? So, let's go to this one. I'm going to tweak this one here, because this really is x minus 2 all over 4. Okay? Which then it becomes the, the, our very first example today. Okay? Which is why I want to do it this way. Okay. So the first thing that I have to do in order to verify or to prove that these are inverses is I have to find that f of x, oops, excuse me, pardon me, that is not correct. I want to say that f of g of x is equal to x. That's the first thing that I want to say. So I'm going to take this value right here, and I am going to put it in for x in f. Well, that becomes 4 times x minus 2 over 4, then plus 2. Agree? Okay, put it in for x. So these two 4s cancel each other out. One's on top, one's on the bottom. So if I'm multiplying 4 times 1 fourth, that just gets me 1. So that leaves me with x minus 2, then plus 2. x minus 2, then plus 2 is equal to just x. So I verified here that f of g of x is x, so I'm good so far. But I have to show the other one also. I have to show that g of f of x is also x. Have to show both. Can't just show one. So now I'm going to take this value, and I'm going to put it in for x over there. So that gives me 4x plus 2, then minus 2, then divided by 4. 
4x plus 2 minus 2 is 4x. 4x divided by 4 is x. And so once again, I've shown that x is equal to x. So these two functions, f and g, are inverses. So I've proved it, I've verified it, whatever you want to call it, but I have to show both of those. Okay? What I'd like you to do now is I would like you to tell me if those two functions are inverses using the composition rule of inverses. So first thing I have to prove is, or I have to show is f of g of x is equal to x. So I'm going to take g of x here, and I'm going to put it into x in f. So that's, whoa, tap the brakes. That's going to be 3 times the quantity 1 third x plus 1, then minus 1. So then that would be um, x plus 3 minus 1, which becomes x plus 2. Yes? So are they inverses? No, because that's not equal to x. These two are not the same. I should have put that in a different color. These two are not the same, so f of x and g of x are not inverses. Okay. What I would like you to do is I would like you to find me the inverse of this function and then verify that they what you found is truly the inverse using the composition rule. Okay? So find me the inverse and then verify that it is the inverse. I get the cube root of x minus 1 as my inverse. Okay. Now we have to verify that. So now I'm going to treat that one as my g of x. Okay. So f of g of x has to equal x. So I'm going to take this and put it into there. So that's going to be the cube root of x minus 1, then is going to be cubed, and then plus 1. Cube root cancels out a cube, or a cube cancels out a cube root, so this just becomes x minus 1 plus 1, which is just x. So that's good so far, because I got x and, x and x. Then I'm going to take g of f of x, and that also has to be equal to x. So I'm going to take this thing, and I'm going to put it in there. So that's going to be the cube root of 
x cubed plus 1, then minus 1. Plus 1 minus 1 cancels each other out, leaves me with the cube root of x cubed. Over the last couple of days, we've been simplifying radicals, and we know that that is equal to x. So once again, those two have been verified. So let me get rid of my... So then this is my inverse. Okay? So this is what I got for you for homework tonight. Um, really, this is just numbers 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 24, and 27. Eight total problems. Three, find the inverse. Three, verify the inverse. Then two more, find the inverse. Okay? So three, six, and nine are find me the inverse. Uh, 12, 15, and 18, I think, are verify that they are inverses. And then 24 and 27, again, are find the inverses. Okay? Have a great day. Thanks for playing along.